Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today what I want to do is a review on this Klein Tools multimeter. It's MM700. It's a nice multimeter. It's uh, I think it's actually great for the bench, but it's also made for the electrician. And let's first of all cover the first priority I think is safety, right? So a meter has to be third party tested, you know, UL, ETL, one of those labs. So this one happens to be ETL tested. The other thing is what's it tested to? What category? On the bench here, category one and two is fine. You know, AC power, all that stuff. Category three and category four, that's where electricians work. And uh, category four is kind of scary stuff, but those categories, you really want to be third party tested to prove that you're safe for those things because that is, you know, some high energy stuff. Well, so it is. This this is third party tested, category four. So that's pretty impressive. Now, I've got this Amazon meter up here too, just so we can kind of do some comparisons, kind of show what they look like. This is a category four as well. Now, I have this fluke up here, it's 18B plus. This guy maybe doesn't belong here. Price-wise, he kind of fits in the category for the bench if you're interested in something similar that works on a bench. But he's not third-party tested. It's made in China. I don't even think it's supposed to be sold in the U.S. But anyway, I stuck it up here. I did a review once before on this guy with the Fluke 117. I really wasn't happy with the Fluke 117, and it was a lot of money. You know, it's like twice the price of this guy. Okay, this guy, I think on Amazon today, it's just under 90 bucks. Okay, US dollars. The 117 that I got rid of, it's like 180 something on sale today on Amazon. And uh, this guy, this guy's all over the park. Uh, I've seen it for like $140, and I've seen it down around closer to $100, like on uh, AliExpress, I think. So, I, I couldn't find it on Amazon today, but I found the 17, and it was, I think, $140, $130, something like that. So, and now this 90DM600, Amazon, this guy, he is priced right around $100. Now, I would recommend actually buying uh, the one that came out after I bought this one. It's the uh, 610. And that one's about $123. It gives temperature, but I think it's worth it. Uh, then you got it, you know, if you don't ever use temperature, then get this one. But I think that's the only difference between them. So this guy's a 6,000 count meter. This guy's a 4,000 count meter. All right, well, let's talk about why they're good for electricians. First of all, the category ratings, right? The safety ratings, that's number one. You know, make sure it's going to do that for you. The next thing is because you're throwing it in a bag and you're working out in the field, you want it to be rugged. So this is built rugged. And let's talk about the uh, housing in a minute. But first of all, let's talk about some more of the certifications, the testing. This has an IP42 rating. This has an IP40. That's ingress protection IP. And this guy is uh, uh, 67. This guy's really impressive. The first number has to do with dry particles, you know, like uh, wires, your finger, things like that. When you go down to a four, that means you're getting down to small wires. And so, you know, these two guys have a four. The Fluke 117 is the same as this, by the way. And so that means you can't put a small wire uh, in any of these orifices. You can't, you know, it's sealed up for that. It's tight enough. Maybe some of these other meters that don't have it, you could maybe squeeze a wire into. I don't know. But now this guy with the 67, that means a five means pretty close to dust proof. Six means dust proof. So this guy is sealed up pretty tight. Okay. Now the seven, the next number in it, and this one means you could, if, if it started raining on you, you're an electrician out in the field, you're going to put this in your jacket or something. You're going to run for your truck and you fall in a big old puddle of water, you know, neck deep. 
the meter goes down in underwater, this guy's going to be okay because he's sealed. Now these, well this one has a 40, so that's a zero. So this one has no moisture protection. A one, a rating of one means if it's raining and it's landing on top of it, it can run over the top and, and you know, go vertically down. A two, what this is rated for, means you could be about 15 or is it 17 degree angle, so you can have a little bit of water actually hitting the top and running down, so it might actually, you know, have a better chance of seeking in, right? The next rating above that is, is sprayed water. So, um, so that's your IP rating. Also, drop test. Often I don't find drop tests on flukes for some reason. It's kind of weird because, you know, we all feel like they're so durable, but um, but this guy and this one, the Amazon and the Klein both have, they both have the two meter drop. Is it two meter? Yeah, it's two meter. That's a uh, six and a half feet. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> so anyway, you can drop them from six and a half feet. They've been uh, tested that way. And okay, so that's about the durability, the testing, the certifications, that kind of stuff. Things you should be able to trust. Okay. Now let's just talk about some build. Let's compare them. These cases on both these devices, much like the more expensive flukes, they're, the rubber case is actually uh, molded into the plastic. I don't, you know, I don't know how they do that, but this hard plastic here, which is, I mean, this meter is very solid, uh, and so is the Amazon, by the way. They they feel just really chunky and you know if you notice like this one it's kind of a slippery it's kind of a slick let's say if you're wet a little bit i think it'd be slippery you know it's just going to slide but it does have a little bit of that shape where it's kind of bigger at top where if you're holding it you know you got a kind of a bigger end hourglass kind of shape but this one's much more pronounced and also the rubber's softer and it has kind of a texture but it has these ribs so why not add ribs if you're going to shape some plastic around it, right? But this is integrated into the hard plastic, what I'm saying. It's not like a sock that you can take off like this one, okay? And the bad thing about this is you can get dust and moisture down in here that holds it against the seam of the two halves. So maybe it eventually, you know, creeps in. So th that's one thing about that where you don't even see it, you know, if it collected some humidity or whatever you can collect moisture or dust and that kind of thing where these are more protected that's why fluke and their more expensive meters integrate the rubber to the hard plastic they've done that for years now the other thing is this has a rubberized little grabber here now the indicator is just black against a blue background not real visible you could take some fingernail polish fix that same here on this one you can fix that. This one, it's very visible. The whole wheel, you know, this whole thing is rubberized, so it gives a nice fill. You know, you can operate this with one hand. What I like is off buttons up in the middle. And so you only have to go halfway to get back to the middle. And same with the Amazon. It's kind of in the middle, right? You got currents on one side, voltages on this side. Same as this meter. This guy, you know, is a normal where you you know swing all the way to one side to off well, that's nice in some senses but yeah, you have to go all the way from here all the way over there to off so and that's hard to do with one hand now the other thing about these cases they all have the the grabbers for your test leads right now one thing that you notice here when I grab these leads they just fall okay they're nice and supple I think it's PVC, but it's just a soft PVC. It's very nice. And they have the ETL rating, so that's nice too. And uh, I think it's 6,000 volts, uh, 85C rated. But when you put one of these probes in here, like let's say you only have two hands. I only have two hands. And if I'm reading voltage on a panel, I don't have to. And if I don't have my magnetic strap, which I could put on this, but if I don't have one, then I could touch the you know ground or neutral or whatever with this lead and then I could go around and touch things and watch what I'm doing with my right hand 
you know, keeping my left hand in place, hopefully, right? But anyway, so it gives you the ability to do, uh, you know, operate, hold your meter and your two leads without needing three arms. So that's a nice benefit. The other thing, as far as the case goes, the stands. The stands are all, I think, pretty close, equally nice as far as being rigid, kind of soft, rigid, that uh, hold them in place and similar angles. I, th I think all three of them are nice. This one kind of wins because again, it has some rubber, uh, some rubber uh, formed into the plastic. So, you know, against a slippery surface or something, a slick surface, you got a little bit more grab. So I kind of like that. So yeah, uh, as far as the case goes on this, very, very rugged, same thing with the Amazon. And as far as uh, special features for electricians, uh, this does have the low Z setting for ghost voltages. You know, if you have cables routed together and you got some energy in some of the other cables, they could induce a field on a, on a set of cables that when you take a measurement, you see some voltage and you're like, wow, there shouldn't be voltage here. The low Z, you put your meter over there and it puts uh, about 3K ohms, something like that, on the lines, and it'll drain that energy right off them. It's low energy, and it's just been, you know, induced onto the cable. So any kind of impedance like that, low impedance, will just drain off the field, kind of like draining the capacitor. And then you'll see, you know, that you don't have any voltage. So th that's a special feature for electricians that you wouldn't need on the bench. It does have mic ramps, temperature, all the other things we like on the bench, you know, hertz and duty cycle. Uh, the Fluke 117 doesn't have mic ramps or I don't think, it just has three posts. So you just have amps where all these meters are similar that they have milliamps mic ramps. So that's why these kind of compare. But I like to, uh, I see people, I've, I've heard people uh, on other videos comparing this to the Fluke 117, which I think it's twice the price so but then again the feature set and the capabilities are much more similar to this although it's only a category three or this category four so uh, this is a I think a meter worth looking at if you're an electrician because of the category rating the safety rating the IP drop test and you know they all have large displays now I can tell you from this angle that this display has higher contrast, a little easier to see. So, but as far as backlights go, if you ever need a backlight, here I'll just turn them on, even though we have all these lights here. Uh, and I, like here I can see that light, I can barely tell anything happened there. Yeah, these two guys to me from this angle look equal. Anyway, I'll bring the camera over, let's do some testing, and let's see what you think. Hey, I almost forgot to show you the bags. Uh, the Klang comes with a nice canvas bag. No pockets inside, padded on both sides. Uh, kind of a slick surface on the inside, canvas on the outside. Comes with the thermocouple type K. I like them when they're separate like this, like this little gadget that goes in, in the meter so it's less expensive and not a specialized deal because these thermocouples are really inexpensive to buy and you kind of do go through them sometimes you damage them uh, the fluke comes with a bag surprisingly right uh, it doesn't say fluke or anything this was the Chinese made fluke so they I think they feel like you should get bags <laughs> anyway there's padding on both sides kind of slick on the inside slick on the outside that's the thing I'm not too you know, fond about. Uh, pretty much all the fluke bags are really slick. They're kind of vinyl. But I like these canvas ones. This one's just like the Klein, except for the inside material has kind of like that sticky, uh, that cloth material that's kind of grabby. So I'm kind of wondering if that, I don't know, probably wear fine. But anyway, they come with bags. Pretty cool. Oh, and the Klein uh, leads come with these little alligator clips. I didn't get those because I bought this used. So I missed out on those. Hey, one more thing. I'm going to show you a board. 
Uh, I don't do a bunch of voltage tests and resistance tests, current testing, you know, like seeing if the meter is giving calibrated voltages out. Uh, you know, of all the reviews I watch, I watch a lot of them because I like them, but on the reviews where I've seen them comparing this meter voltage to this meter or the meter to the power supply or the current source they're supplying it with, and for instance, if it's 12 volts and it's 12.1, and they're like, well, it's close enough. I, I don't, what I don't see is people talking about what's it actually spec'd at? What is the tolerance uh, AC or DC voltage? I think that's a lot more helpful than just taking a whole bunch of readings and saying, oh, look, see, it reads 10K ohms. Oh, look, it read 100 ohms. Wow. Oh, it's not exactly 100 ohms, but it's close enough. Yeah, I don't see a lot of value in that so anyway I'm gonna show you a board and I'm gonna kind of talk about how this meter kind of falls in with the rest of them okay hey guys one more thing I want to mention real quick uh, when you turn this guy on if you hold this orange select button down and you wait it turns off the automatic off but I don't even know if that's necessary for a lot of work because um, when you turn it on it'll stay on for a half an hour I like that period of time you know those a lot of meters it's like 10 15 minutes 20 minutes maybe but a half an hour that that's a decent period of time but yeah you can't override that the other thing is the backlight when you turn on the backlight it's not on for just five seconds or 20 seconds or even half a minute it's on for three minutes so there again I think they did a nice job choosing uh, to let you turn it off if you want but, you know, after three minutes, that's probably a long time to have your backlight on. You're going to run out your battery. But I don't know if there's a way to override that. But I, I actually didn't find that in the manual. But I know you can't override the power off, the auto power off. Just wanted to mention that. Within each range and each, like, resistance, current, or voltage, there's different tolerances it's not like the meter is a one percent meter you know there's it, it changes depending on what you're reading and the range okay so i just chose a couple voltages to give you a kind of an idea and 120 volts in the u.s is normal that's our normal ac voltage so i thought i'd use that one okay well the and i'm going to use the fluke 117 even though i don't have it here on the bench it's in that other review where i compared it to the 18 and and the 18 and the 17 actually have very close specs. The Amazon's actually very close to the Flukes too. It's actually better in some areas. I think in DC voltage, I think it's better. The Klein isn't quite as good as the Fluke, but uh, it's half the price of that Fluke. But as the 117. Okay, so for the 120 volt range, you know, uh, this is gonna be 1% plus three digits. So, 120 volts can go from 121.2 to 118.8 with the 1%. But when you add or subtract three digits, if you add them, you get these two numbers. You subtract them, you get those two. So, really, these corner cases, it, it can range about plus or minus 1.5 volts. That's what it looks like, right? Okay, the Klein, doing the same kind of math, it's 1.5 plus 5 digits. And even though that sounds like a lot worse than that, like 1.5 plus 5 versus that, it goes from 122.3, you know, it's not hugely different, 117.7. So that's the range it can, it can fall in. And another voltage, so I took a lower voltage, like say 12 volts, you know, car battery, right? So if you're at 12 volts, same kind of thing, 1206 to 1194 is your range with 0.5%, usually you get better tolerance on DC voltage, 0.5% and only two digits, so that's pretty darn good. And it goes from 1208 to 11.92. It's pretty tight. Okay, now the uh, Klein, it's 1% plus three digits. So it's 12.15 to 11.85, so that's the range. So, even though these numbers, that looks like so much better, 0.5 versus 1, and also this has three digits versus two, 
it turns out to be like what you know it's seven millivolts so yeah, it's not a big deal so yeah doing a bunch of readings and all that kind of stuff it's just more for entertainment than anything I think because it's I don't know how useful that is I think this is more useful to see the range that you can actually fall in uh, okay so here let me just bring the camera over now and let's take a closer look at this thing so I'm just going to bring up the voltage so you can watch how the range has changed. Okay, I'm in it. Look, I'm at 389 millivolts. Now, first of all, this guy's auto ranged down to the millivolts. This guy, I have to change to millivolts. And then I have to go to uh, DC. Yeah, so it's kind of nice. This guy actually automatically ranges down into the millivolts, right? Now, this guy over here, same thing. Okay. Now let's continue to go up. Okay, now see after I hit uh, four, it dropped in spot, right? And so these guys are still counting up. Let's go a little higher. Okay, now that's overload, so let me go here. This guy here, we're still in millivolts. Once we go over 600, well, it has a little range over six, but then it wants to go up here. So then we're so that's how the count thing works, and also the auto ranging. So that was a good example of showing both. This guy, you don't have to go between the two; he automatically ranges even between them. So even though they're all automatic meters, in one sense, these guys aren't completely because you have to physically change from millivolts to volts. So in that sense, this guy is a true auto ranging as far as volts go. Okay, then now the next time they change, here, let's go up in volts. Here, I'm just going to go up a little faster. All right, so now, just right when I hit four volts, you can probably bet what's going to happen, right? See, right over four volts, we lose that decimal spot. This guy's a 6,000 count, but both of these are 4,000 counts, so we lost the decimal point. Now, once I hit 6 volts, the Amazon will drop. Alright, let's t check out the continuity on this guy. Now, here, you know what thing what I like to do just before I do that? Just I'll just go through the ranges so you can see. Now, you see it says lead when I go to current lead. It doesn't detect that I'm not in there. See, if I go over here to milliamps, and if I go back to, it doesn't know that I'm not there. It just tells me, it's just a reminder saying, hey, change your lead. So that's nice. I mean, that's, you know, what I notice is neither the Amazon or the Fluke have any kind of indication. They don't know where the leads are. And they don't remind you to change the leads. So I was kind of a little surprised, but but so whenever you go to current, well, act for that matter, when you go down here, it tells you to change your lead because they don't know if you're here and then you went there. So they just tell you to change your leads whenever you go from current to anything else. Well, except for off. <laughs> All right, let's go back to ohms. Look at that bar graph. Do you hear how loud that is? Yeah, we don't do this fire start. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, so that's nice and loud. Uh, here, let's, on this one, we actually have four things. So, you got just normal ohms. You see it went through all those ranges. Okay, and then, um, diode. There's no beep on the diode, by the way. You notice that? All right, guys, I have a power supply here with a bunch of diodes 
form in a bridge rectifier. That's just there's 0.4. There's no beep though. And then that's going through uh, two diodes going the other direction. But yeah, so reach diodes. All right, guys, the diode mode is just that. It's for diodes, for troubleshooting diodes. Uh, I know it's become a popular thing to, to review uh, the meters and showing them light up LEDs, right? But that is just a kind of a cool secondary function, but it shows the voltages over there. So... Yeah, it lights up all those colors. This is the hardest one on the board, I think. But yeah, it lights up the white one too. So 2.6, that's nice. Uh, we have some capacitors over here. Let's just go to capacitor. Now this guy can go down in picofarads in the small capacitors, so that's nice. Okay, there's one nanofarad. Okay, there's one microfarad. These guys have some soft legs. Okay, I got a 1000 microfarad here. Right, saying it's still kind of building up actually. I might have slipped off there for a moment. Yeah, so that was a microfarad count. And back to the diode check just to show you the voltage on that. The open voltage 3.2 volts. That's why it's able to light up all those LEDs. Okay, guys, a little K type thermocouple. Positive minus shows positive minus the red down there. It also has a plus and minus here and narrow and wide. So they try to make it foolproof. Then, well, you can see it's kind of cool in here. That's 16C, 60F. And you know, you've seen thermocouples work. It's just nice that it has that off option, I think. So now the other thing is it has this low Z. That's the the nice feature and it shows low Z up here. Another thing I was pointing out is that auto. That's the auto timer. So in 30 minutes this guy's gonna shut off. But if you knew that you're gonna work for a while and you didn't want that to happen, you just hold that down. and it goes away see it goes it was giving me that buzzing sound because of the thermocouple in here okay so frequency you can see it's almost 10 kilohertz that's what my generator set at but also uh, 900 millivolts peak to peak okay so it likes to have so that's uh, 318 millivolts rms so it likes to be over, I think, 300 millivolts or something for sensitivity level to pick up the frequency. It's not very much voltage, but it's just something to be aware of. Okay, there's 500 kilohertz. That's where it's rated. Let's go to 6. Nope. Well, I'm kind of surprised it actually goes 500 being a 4,000 count meter, but that's pretty good, I think. So, yeah, even 510 kilohertz. 500 kilohertz, they're serious when they said that. That's what they meant. All right, guys, we're at 60 hertz. Let's check out the true RMS. And my generator is set for two volts RMS, and that's what it looks like it's putting out. It's a sine wave, so let's go to a square wave. All right, so still two volts. All right, so let's check out 2.124. Let's compare that to what the, uh, gotta go to AC though. That's pretty close, 2.09. That's pretty close, 2.1. Let's check out the fluke. Oh, you know what, guys? Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't think this is a true RMS meter. Well, I, 
that totally uh, kind of slid by me until just I just now realized that. Holy cow! I just always expect uh, the Flukes to be true RMS, but that's you know the Fluke 70 series. The only one is 79. That's something to be aware of. Uh, no true RMS. Yeah, look. So okay, there's what you get without a true RMS meter. Then we go to sine wave. All right. So we're back to 2.1 in the sine wave. 2.1 and basically that's pretty close to 2.1 right let's go back to that square wave okay I'm just gonna I just want to pop back over here yeah 2.08 so it has is I guess it's just a generator man see that's why you want a true RMS meter because if you don't have a clean, and this is only 60 hertz, guys. Now, the true RMS, it only goes up to 400 hertz on this. And I think that's because, you know, most power systems are 50 hertz, 60 hertz, or 400 hertz. So I think that's why. But let me take the frequency up and see what happens at 400 hertz. Okay, there's 400 hertz. It's still reading good voltage. So that, I think that's still good. Yeah. Let's see what this guy thinks. It doesn't like 400 hertz as much as it likes 60 hertz. So, yeah, that's it. Boy, I'm glad I did that because I, I totally forgot this was not a true RMS meter. That really shows the value of this in comparison. Both 4,000 count. This guy has the low Z. And, you know, it's super rugged. You can see how... That displays inset. Let's take off the battery compartment, right? Okay, that's nice. It has um, the kind of fuses we'd like to have. Also, see this grid pattern? That's make the back of that very strong. And uh, see how deep these channels are? So it sits down inside here. And you notice that's hard plastic, and then they have a rubberized seal around there. Yeah, so that ma that mates up with this ridge around here. So very nice, uh, and also the inset, you know, for the screw. So that's nice. Let me show you the back side of the case, so you can see the ETL it has all the information about the fuses. So you don't, you can it tells you what kind of fuse to put in there. So that's pretty nice. But yeah, there you go. And uh, if we take out our batteries, you can see how the compartment is separated, isolated, electrically isolated. Uh, fuse on either side, that's a nice touch. Uh, whether you drop this, there's no way the fuse is gonna slide very far because of the plastic. I can't tell. Oh, there's actually the metal on the ends too that keeps the fuse from moving. So, very nice. All right, I hear you. Let's take let's take off the rest of it. Okay, let's uh let's got the screws loose. Let's see how hard it is to take this thing apart. That's not too bad. Oh the screws all stayed in. I wonder if they're it's no I was thinking there's no way they're captive. God they these bottom ones kind of feel like they are. I don't that's un you know that's usually only for expensive meters they do that man those things they stay in there tight that one doesn't want to come out but yeah look at all the features uh, all these things make the case strong and you see that fat channel right there and it has kind of this rubber mate that's going to mate to this side and you see the features on these screw posts just to make it very strong. Wow, guys. I think that looks great. And see the resistors in the chain here? Large through hole resistor. Look at these large diodes. Those are some pretty good size MILF uh, diodes in there. And our MILF resistors over here. 
And then see the little plastic tabs that capture the board? I know you can see the cutouts in the board, right? Looks like a very clean board. I mean, how the terminals are bolted down. Looking down inside there, they look solid. Okay guys, so for you that like to look at the chips, looks like a bunch of regulators in here. A tantalum capacitor there. So no aluminum electrolytics to wear out. All right, so I've removed seven screws, had to remove the fuse to get to that screw, and four nuts with lock washers. And I was waiting to open up with you guys to see it for the first time with me. That's good, I didn't want that to pop out. By the way, that knob, when I rotated, if you could tell, had a very, very positive click. Look at the feature around here holding the buttons in place. And you can see the post here around the display. All very nicely designed. Okay. Let's flip it over. Here we go. <laughs> wow. Pretty cl darn clean design, I got to say. Okay. Look at this. You know, I thought that was a diode on the other side. Now I realize... Those are uh, those are tubes. Those are arc tubes. or <clears throat> gas-filled tubes. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, good-sized thick PTCs. A nice big old 1K resistor. And look how they get the current from up here to the current shunt. Wow, that is interesting. They left all this board exposed down here, all, all the cutouts, so they put the shunt up here. So, yeah, look at these. These must be protectors, these little uh, transistors down here. And, man, I'm just impressed with how big these guys are. That looks like a, a tantalum capacitor, that black one. And I can see some grease down on this thing. You know, I, I don't know the pros and cons of grease, guys. If you guys know, leave comments below. You know, but yeah, I can see that they've got grease around here. There's not a lot of tracks. I'm surprised. It's got so many auto, auto modes that I guess it doesn't have to track too much. But yeah, look at the size of these. these uh, I used to do lightning protection. I never used these kind. But there's two big ones here. And this one bridges that gap. This one bridges a gap here. And then this one bridges that gap there. Wow. And then when these guys drop down in here, see this plastic uh, ridge around this dial? So when the board comes, when this guy gets pushed down, He's pushed up against this dial, so uh, these these protective devices are captured down in this in this cavity by themselves. That's a nice safe design. There's your little contacts, of course. Wow, pretty cool. And then this is a nice thick, and see the ridges around this this. Uh, I mean, everything's thought out. So if water where moisture were to get into these buttons there's this little wall around here yeah that is nice and dropping this board down here it just drops right in not loose but just nice and snug like fits like a glove <laughs> I mean it does it just I'm just trying to make sure if I got it all in there nice and tight. I can feel those springs on the other side pushing against me. Other than that, and, and then also these guys here, they're, they're lined up nice, so they kind of just kind of wobbled themselves in. But everything's snug, and 
other than I can feel the tension against those springs on the other side, um, man, it is solid. And by the way, I knew I didn't have to take those screws out. You notice how there's a white uh, marker around all these other screws? I was just hoping that that meant that these were for the display, so I wouldn't have to mess with that. Okay, uh, so what do you guys think? I mean, I think this looks like an impressive meter. For a meter for under $100 with uh, third-party you know, agency testing with a nice bag and temperature uh, probe and things like that. Hey, and by the way, I want to thank my Patreons. I really appreciate your support. And I want to thank everybody for watching the videos and giving comments. And I really like seeing the communication between uh, viewers down below. It's really cool. I'm having a hard time keeping up. So I'm going to try to keep up with the uh, subscribers. And then I'll try to answer others as I do. I'm doing a pretty good job. But I am kind of falling behind a little bit. So subscribe. <laughs> and give a video a thumbs up. Really helps YouTube analytics. Thanks, guys. All right. So back to this. Okay, so what makes this a great electrician's uh, meter, or potentially a great meter? Well, besides being agency tested, third-party tested for safety, and being rugged, built rugged, nice solid meter. Well, it has a nice bag, thermocouple, things like that. But as far as features go, it has a temperature, which can come in handy if you're doing, you know, heating and air conditioning, uh, things you want to measure temperature, and then... Uh, micro amps if you're doing uh, alarm systems or any smoke alarms that kind of thing where you want to you know I understand that sometimes you got to read micro amps for that kind of thing or at least milliamps so it's nice to have those ranges it's a nice meter to use outdoors or you know do your electrical work but also if you do indoor work like electronics work on a bench because it has all the features for that as well but that low Z setting, you know, for the ghost voltages, I mean, putting the impedance on the wire to get rid of that ghost voltage to see that there really isn't any voltage there, that's a, a thing that electricians would use where on the bench you wouldn't probably have a use for that. So it does go to capacitors up to 4,000 microfarads, uh, but what's nice is it goes down to low capacitors too, so uh, in the hundreds of picofarads, so that's nice too. And then, you know, the buttons across the top, having a hold button where you're going to touch something and you want to be really careful and then hold the button and come back and, and see what it read, that's, that's a nice feature. The min-max, obviously, that's another good one. Uh, and then the relative, you know, you can, you, that relative feature can be used for a lot of things. You know, if you're looking at 120 volts or whatever, hit the relative, zeroes it out. And then you can sit there and monitor and see how it fluctuates up, away from 120 volts, plus or minus. And you can set the min and max on that, too, to capture, you know, the min and maxes. So, um, and then, you know, having a, a manual range is nice. Sometimes when you power up something, and you know it's going to come up to, say, 48 volts, 120 volts, whatever it is, the meter is going to go through ranges. And... You know, that might be distracting, and it might, and maybe you only want to power it up and then power it right back down. And you don't want to sit there and wait for the meter to go through the different ranges. So, manually setting the range for, say, 100 volts or 400 volts or whatever you have, then, you know, so it is nice to have a manual range. So, I think it's full featured. It's it's really nice. The two the double fusing, it's great when you have milliamps, microamps to have two fuses. So, so guys, I like this meter. What can I say? I give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think if you've used this. All right, thanks guys. We'll see you next time. Yeah, so this guy is something to look for. I think too. I think these guys are good competitors to each other. Um, Hmm. That was bullshit.